Well, hello again. And this time we are in uh, Rochdale and a place called uh, Healy Dale, otherwise known as Dingley Dale. And uh, yeah, Rochdale is, is not the place you would normally associate with, uh, with a gorge like this with waterfalls, but we are literally two or three miles from the centre of Rochdale. And, um, and we've got this amazing gorge that, uh, that runs through the valley and uh, it's full of water and there's old industrial um, heritage back down there somewhere, or millstones and things like that. It's a great place. But uh, what I'll do in this video is, is go back and reference a video we did quite a while ago on uh, an aperture. We did a whole video on, um, on what aperture does. I'll put a link to it up here in the corner. And tonight what I want to do is record a video about shutter speed because we've got a waterfall there and it's, it's natural for people to want to slow that shutter speed down to kind of get that milk effect on the water. So I just want to talk a little bit tonight about what that is and what it means. So, things that move fast tend to require a faster shutter speed. And that's to freeze the action. So the shutter is the, is the, is the object in the camera that kind of opens when you press the button and the nose it closes. And it does that super, super quick most of the time unless you slow it down. Now some of the videos we've been doing recently have been using slow shutter speeds to create milkiness on water and uh, sky, sky trails with clouds and things like that but, but, but tonight we're going to show you exactly how that works. So a fast shutter speed, so when your camera is taking a shutter speed of about 2,000th of a second on a waterfall it is absolutely going to freeze the motion of that water. It's going to look on the picture as individual blobs of water wherever it is, absolutely frozen in time, a snapshot. If you then to start to extend that shutter speed and, take a, and allow that shutter to be open and let more light into the camera, what the camera's going to capture is the blur of, of that water moving. Now in this case it's water, but it, but it could be anything. It could be a bus going past, it could be a car, it could be some sport, it could be a person walking, anything like that. Now, what we're going to do with this now is we're going to take a picture at 2,000th of a second and have a quick look at what that looks like. So my camera's set up here. Um, we are using 2,000 second shutter speed. I've got the camera on shutter speed priority. Now most of you will have that mode on your camera. It's not something I use very often, but for this sort of stuff, it's, it's great. You just set your shutter speed super fast and away you go. So, shutter speed priority, the, cam the, the camera will handle the aperture and the ISO because I've got all that set to automatic. So I'm gonna press the shutter. There we go, this is a picture at 2,000th of a second. And straight away you can see that the water is frozen in time. There's no blur in that water. It's all really nice and frozen. If I change that shutter speed now and I drop it down, let's drop that down to 500th of a second. Now, we still got quite a lot of frozen water there, but we're starting to see a little bit of movement, a little bit of blur in that image. And as we continue down through the shutter speeds, so let's go to 200th of a second and take another picture. More blur still until we get right down. Let's go mad now. Let's open that up to one second. I just find out my camera. There's the one second. And now what you start to see, let's just have a look at that picture, is the lines of the movement of the water. That blur has started to form. And you can get, you can go more and more and more up to five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds even. Let's go mad, let's do, let's do one on, let's do one on uh, 15 seconds. Now this is gonna be a long, long shutter speed. But when, it come, when you see the picture, all the areas of the image that are white where the water's moving will be a complete blur. You won't be able to see any individual water droplets or streams. This is obviously a great, great effect that a lot of people want to replicate. And people use neutral density filters on the top of their on the front of their lenses in bright weather to try and replicate it because if it's a sunny day you can't create those long shutter speeds you need help and the way to do that is with the neutral density, neutral density filters like the Lee Big Stopper, the Lee Little Stopper and, the, and other filters from Nissi and, and, uh, and other people. Well, let's have a look at that image we just taken now 15 seconds is up and as you can see it is just a white blur now it's not that dissimilar to the one second because of the speed of the movement we've got here today but you can see it is actually exaggerated so that's shutter speed, and that's how shutter speed works. I hope you found that useful. If you did, leave us a comment down below, give us a bit of a thumbs up, and don't forget, down there in the corner, 
subscribe to our channel. We'd love to keep you engaged and uh, let you know when we do another videos in the future. Until then, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.